finish that you watch a speech you're like hell yeah yeah let's get rid of those queers and then immediately it's like oh man i am going to participate in so many man trains when we get to the hotel room Yes, yeah, something is happening in Milwaukee right now. It's the RNC, and uh, as that is taking place, it would seem that Grinder, the gay hookup app, if you didn't know, a app for meeting other men, men who you may want to pleasure sexually with your own body in a multitude of ways, uh, apparently it is crashing uh, the servers because of how much gay sex is taking place at the RNC. Strange. You might be asking why this is all taking place, especially because right now it is pretty clear that the RNC have associated themselves with a lot of individuals who want to eradicate LGBTQ plus people. They want to hurt gay people. They want to kill gay people. And yet there seems to be a lot of gay sex going down. I'm not going to say gay love because I don't know if they love each other. They could. There might be those moments, you know, the post-coitus cuddle sessions where we're just in loving embrace of each other's arms. And man, I, I really wish I could leave my wife for you. And yeah, I wish I could leave my wife for you too. But, uh, you know, we'll always remember the RNC. We'll always remember the moments we shared together. But yeah, it, it's profoundly hilarious and sad at the same time that so many people basically who uh, are fine with the party that is associating itself with all of this extremist rhetoric, right? Like what, what does Libs of TikTok do for a living? If you were to describe your job, it's like, uh, yeah, she basically promotes violence towards LGBTQ plus people. She, uh, you know, b puts targets uh, on them. That's, that's, that's her job. That's what she does for a living. That's a lot of them. That's what Lou Dobbs, who just passed away, rest in piss, used to do. Uh, for, for a living. A lot of people used to do that for a living or do it for a living. It's it's basically a promotion of a whole bunch of different fear-mongering tactics, calling and associating gay people uh, with PDF files, calling them groomers, uh, doing groomer panic, uh, and then surprise, surprise, people are showing up to events with t-shirts that say, shoot your local pedophile, right? That That is a thing that is happening on a very repeated basis until uh, apparently the lights go out or on, depending on what you want to do here. Cause uh, yeah, whole bunch of people are fucking. Now it's just, it's utterly bizarre to me that someone, and, I, I, and I, this is where the profound sadness comes in. I think there's just so much baked in like homophobia and then so much internalized homophobia that even bisexual, pansexual men uh, have to deal with and, and, and wrestle with, uh, even if they are very straight leaning and then they occasionally just enjoy, you know, the old uh, little hand job here and there. Um, that whole thing, obviously uh, plays a role for sure. Being surrounded by family members who might be uh, really uh, homophobic uh, consistently uh, and then wanting to fit in and, and fit in with their community as well, which may be very, very homophobic. But like the thing is, on the very extreme side, you've got straight up hate preachers, Christian evangelicals who are just uh, like calling for the execution of homosexuals, right? Like it's in the fucking Bible. Thou shalt not lay with a man the same way thy lays with a woman. All the way over to mainstream political pundits, Charlie Kirk, Michael Knowles, Matt Walsh, uh, who have been expressing for a long time that we want to eradicate transgenderism from society. Basically trying to get as, as far as they can go to that same kind of messaging while still, uh, you know, keeping their channels and not getting nuked off of YouTube and not getting a lot of noise and attention when everyone is like, holy fuck. And then they'll like, you know, they'll do the whole kabuki theater of it all where they'll back down a little bit afterwards and then be like, uh, well, that's not really what I what I meant. Is What I meant is that we need to get rid of the transgender lifestyle and influence and uh, these people need to return to God. Yeah, so I wasn't, I wasn't calling for anyone's execution. I was simply saying that we need to eradicate transgenderism itself, right? Uh, and it's like, yeah, but th those two are not things that can be separated for people who are trans. Therefore, you want to eradicate them. Like that's the that's the maths of this whole thing. So Grinders experiencing outages due to unprecedented traffic in Milwaukee right now, and that is uh, crashing their servers. Yep, that's just again you you, you check out. I guess as soon as it's over, you, you're you're watching. Uh, who was the last speaker last yesterday? Matt Gates. By the way, Matt Gates, gender affirming care. Yeah, you got a lot of gender affirming care. 
fuck ton of gender from here, in fact. Some might say too much. Might have, might have gone a little bit too hard on the, the old gender affirming care there, but yep, you got a lot of gender affirming care. It is a uh, thing that happened. And so, yeah, you, you, you finish that, you watch the speech, you're like, hell yeah, yeah, let's get rid of those queers. And then immediately it's like, oh man, I am going to participate in so many man trains when we get to the hotel room. Fuck. Crashed. Now, this is not like a 100% uh, new phenomenon, actually. This is something that's been observed for a while now. Uh, if you notice this, Grinder usage has, for some reason, spiked in the immediate vicinity of CPAC over the next few days. Ba bam! A lot of gay sex. Reporter uses Grinder to uncover tons of gay men at right-wing CPAC gathering. Cleveland was bombarded with white dudes on Grinder during the RNC. According to the uh, data from the gay social networking app, the biggest trend during the RNC was the overrepresentation of white males. Male escorts are making crazy money at the RNC. Interesting stuff. Now. I want to read this old article uh, about what happened in the past to see if we can learn about the future. Data from the dating app Grindr suggests that Millianopolis's party wasn't the only place gay men were hanging out with during the Republican National Convention. Analysis of the number of Grindr users within a five-mile radius around the Quicken Loans area shows that there was a disproportionate increase in activity during the RNC. Of the night on July 17th, the Sunday that the check-in for convention began, there was roughly 120% increase in users online in the area, more than all previous evenings in July. This was uh, very similar, by the way, to the data that we started seeing that in some of the reddest, most anti-trans states, there seems to be an incredibly uh, high volume of people looking up trans pornography and pornography featuring trans people. So on the one end, it's like there's all of this bigotry and hatred and then spew. But like you see the way that like, you know, how Tim Pool can call uh, Emma Vigland uh, like a pedophile or insinuate that she's a pedophile. And then afterwards want to go get poker with the boys, sushi with the boys. Like, oh, I check out at the office. Yeah. So this, but these are two separate states. All right. Uh, once the, the lights are down and the cameras are off uh, at that moment in time, it's uh, time to go get sushi and uh, play poker with the boys. Um, but in this case, it's just, you know, just drinking tons and tons of man juice, right? Just, just, just slurping it all down. That's what's taking place here. Um, and by the very same people who will be trying to pass legislation that directly impacts gay men, unfortunately. It's like, it's, it's sad. There is obviously going to be a really high contingent of people who are just straight up cheating on their wives and then they go back to their families and that's just basically, you know, their little weekend getaway, uh, romantic ex uh, expedition, I should say. Um, but then there's other people who are probably 100% closeted homosexuals too which is again profoundly sad it's, it's profoundly sad that you have to hide a part of yourself that you have to deny a part of yourself and not only in addition to that you then have to make harder life harder for other gay men you have to you have to go out of your way essentially you know um and that's again it's profoundly sad and it's why i don't really have a lot of pity when it comes to the anti-gay gays the finding reveals a disproportionate increase in grinder usage compared to other popular destinations across the U.S. during that same time frame. While grinder uh, grinder usage near Quicken Loans showed a 66% increase during the RNC, other active destinations, including Times Square, Capitol Hill, Disneyland, South Beach, and Trump Tower, showed no comparable increase in active users. However, grinder tells broadly from Sunday to Monday, the week of the Democratic National Convention, there wasn't even higher 148% increase in the activities around the Wells Fargo Arena in Philadelphia. Now, see, like if you're part of a party uh, and you're part of a convention where the the policies are very very friendly towards LGBTQ plus people, or at least better and better now, by the way, historically, you know, a lot of people who uh, are a, a lot more woke now used to be pieces of shit like Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, um, you know, all of these like the Defense of Marriage Act, fucking old style type liberals. Um, but yeah, so uh, civil rights have uh, helped push and move the Overton window. People have come a very long way and now there's certainly uh, a distinct difference between the RNC and the DNC when it comes to LGBTQ plus rights. It's probably one of the most striking differences between the two. And in this case, uh, yeah, I mean, go to town, you know, enjoy yourselves. There's a lot less hypocrisy there. Many of these users were visitors, meaning they had opened the app for the first time in Cleveland, Philadelphia, in the in the least, uh, sorry, in the yeah, in the last three months. That's uh, an awesome little tidbit to know. In addition, like, oh man, there's so much juicy data here. It's like, yeah, you downloaded the app, you downloaded the app for this event, you used it, and then you're probably gonna delete it before you get home. Very easy way to hide. 44% of the Grindr users near Quicken Loans Sunday through Wednesday were visitors to Cleveland. 57% of the app's users near the DNC from Sunday to Monday were visitors. 
The demographics of these users is also noteworthy. While the average age was comparable to the average age on Grindr users, in general, 31 years, the, us the users near both of the convention centers were disproportionately white. When comparing Quicken loans uh, visitors to the Grindr community at large, the biggest trend is over-representation of white males, Grindr tells broadly. White men comprise around 40% of the Grindr community, but represent 75% of the visitors at the RNC. And though Grindr's data from the DNC includes fewer days and therefore cannot be directly compared, it did indicate the percentage of visiting users was around 68% white, which is actually more diverse than the local population, according to Grindr. So where are these Grindr users hoping to find their political conventions? A word cloud sent to broadly by Grindr shows the most popular terms used in the profiles of men during the RNC were visiting and fun. There were 27 mentions of the RNC in user profiles and six mentions of Trump. A similar word cloud for the DNC showed looking guy DNC to be commonly used terms. And then there were three mentions of Hillary. <laughs> As a, again, profoundly weird in both directions there. Why, why you got to bring Hill Dog into this? Well, what are you doing? At the RNC, Trump vowed to protect the LGBTQ plus community against foreign threats, and billionaire Peter Thiel gave a speech in which he said he was proud to be gay. This has led to some to call the 2016 Republican National Convention the most gay-friendly RNC ever. Boy, did that change. <laughs> that, was, that was quick. Now, like, half the speeches at the RNC are basically like, the gays are coming for your kids, the gays are coming for your children, the gays, the gays, the gays, uh, blah, blah, blah. Hey, who here is proud to be straight? Who here is proud to be straight and impregnate their wives? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's right. I, I've had sex at least once or twice. You can tell because I have children. Hell yeah. Despite this, the 2016 Republican platform condemns the Supreme Court's uh, rule of Oberfell v. Hodge legalizing same-sex marriage and states this continued belief that traditional marriage and family based on marriage between one man and one woman is the foundation of a free society and has been for millennia. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's so many different types of uh, closeted gay men, right? Uh, and vile right-wing closeted gay men, such as, uh, like your Benny Johnsons, for example. Benny Johnson, if you don't know, famously, uh, it was revealed that he has been searching up gay cruises uh, and he's quickly, you know, he deleted that and tried to hide all the evidence. Uh, there's, uh, what's the guy from the blaze, uh, who got called out by Christian Walker for apparently like, you know, really, really being, uh, a, a closet bisexual, uh, and going to town at the RNCs. Um, but that was another example. Uh, there's, uh, obviously, you know, people have, uh, pointed towards a, a number of, of different figures. Michael Knowles often gets brought up a lot as well. Uh, but you know, I think the jury's still out. Um, oh, Jesse Lee Peterson. That's, oh, Jesse Lee Peterson is an extreme example because he was an actual predator, um, and has been trying to like run away from that. Well, at the same time, all day is doing all the kind of like, you know, uh, gay men are living in sin. Uh, it's beta um, because of uh, their homosexuality. They have been influenced by their mothers and that's why they're weak and all this other shit. Um, so, yeah, Elijah Schaefer. Thank you. Elijah Schaefer was the one who got who has been accused of uh, being a uh, closet bisexual by both the quartering and uh, Christian Walker at this point. Um, I, again, this is all... Uh, hearsay unless someone comes out they come out kind of shit but it would be profoundly uh evil and sad uh if it turns out that all of these people are you know closet bisexuals or closet homosexuals and at the same time they're willing again to continue to push forward an agenda that gets gay people hurt and it's it's the whole like you know people often wonder like why why do pick me's exist it's because it's safer and uh, easier for them in their own situations to want to live in a world in which they feel like they can be uh, the good ones and, and be protected uh, as things get worse. But like, as I was saying, you know, when it comes to, say, the rise of Nazism, LGBTQ plus people were, were like some of the first targets. Like the first mass book burning the Nazis did was of uh, Dr. Magnus Hirschfeld's Institute. Uh, and he was a gay Jewish man. And he was uh, professed by the Nazis to be one of the most dangerous Jews in all of Germany, is I believe was like the exact quote from Hitler. Uh, and uh, yeah, they, they distinctly targeted uh, the gay community. And there were gay Nazis who believed that they would be safe. But no, they got fucking executed. They, they went after the gay Nazis and they went after and, and started... Uh, rounding them up, and they became part of yes, uh, one of the one of the groups that was seen as subhuman and inferior uh, under the Nazi exterminationist project. That included obviously over six million Jews, but that also included a lot of gay people, a lot of trans people, a lot of people who were misidentified uh, as simply being gay when uh, they may have been trans, uh, and they were also executed in camps and forced labor camps and all that kind of stuff. And it's like it, it's a, a, a profound. Uh, like miscalculation 
to, to think somehow if you are a Dave Rubin and you allow your identity to be weaponized by the right in the very identity politics way that you complain about all the time happening from the left, if you allow that to happen and do whatever they want, whatever Dennis Prager wants at any given day, it's like, oh, I need you to talk about how you're living in sin, you know, and he's just like, okay, yeah, so I'm living in sin. I'm, I'm a sinner. I, I'm, but don't worry. I, I accept it because I'm one of the good ones. Like, the, the end result, if uh, there is an authoritarian dictatorship under Trump or something like that, you know, worst case scenario, uh, is, is, and they start moving in right towards fascism, whose voices do you think is going to be louder? The, the hate preachers who are screaming and, and screaming for the execution of homosexuals or the, the moderate gay Republicans who are just like, well, I, I just enjoy lower taxes. Yes, I enjoy lower taxes and also uh, having sex with men. But I do enjoy lower taxes. So that's why I'm here. Uh, which voice is going to be louder in, in, in that scenario, right? Secret bonus episodes as well as uncensored content, go to patreon.com slash the serves. This show is produced by Anna Loves Riley. Arian McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Comrade Junkie, Doug Caddy, Everything Important, Hagbard Celine, Jimmy Sombrero, Multimondi, Omni, Political Puppy, Preston Kroll, Quiet 185, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Cernicus, Stellar Gwynn, Sebastian Demel, Travis McClinton, Trincell, Words Greenwood. With additional support coming from all of these amazing human beings right here.